Have you ever wondered whether to commit that new packagelock.json file created by NPM5? You're not alone. Today, we're diving into this question and helping you understand what to do with this file. I totally get it. The introduction of the packagelock.json file can be confusing, especially if you're used to working with other lock files like yarn.lock or composer.lock. It's a common concern among developers. Here's the specific question we're addressing today. One user asked, is the package lock JSON file supposed to be kept in source control? This is a great question and it's important to clarify. So what exactly is the package lock.json file? It ensures that your project installs the exact same dependencies every time, which is crucial for maintaining consistency across different environments. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly whether to commit this file or not. And I promise you'll feel more confident in your version control practices. To address the user's question about the packagelock.json file, the first step is to understand its purpose. The packagelock.json file is automatically generated when the user installs packages using NPM5. Next, the user should consider the benefits of keeping the package lock JSON file in source control. This file helps maintain consistency across different environments by locking the exact versions of dependencies. The user can also compare the package lock.json file to other lock files such as yarn.lock and composer.lock. Like these files, package lock.json should be committed to source control. Finally, the user should add the package lock.json file to their version control system. This ensures that all team members and deployment environments use the same dependency versions. Fun fact, the package lock.json file was introduced in NPM5 to make dependency management easier. It's like having a GPS for your project dependencies. No more getting lost. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. This user emphasizes that while it's generally recommended to commit the package lock.json file, it ultimately depends on your project's structure. They note that this file is not published to NPM, but it's essential for locking versions of dependencies in your repository. Additionally, if you're using Lerna to manage multiple packages, you should only have the package.json and package lock.json at the root of your repository, not in each subpackage. That's it for that response. Let's explore another one. This user suggests not committing the package lock.json file to source control. They explain that since npm install generates this file during deployment, it can lead to conflicts if changes are made on the server. They emphasize that as long as node modules is not included in the repository, package lock.json should be ignored. They also mention that removing package lock.json does not affect the build process for JavaScript and CSS, as NPM does not complain when it is absent. They conclude that versioning should rely on package.json, which already contains version numbers. That wraps up that answer. Let's move on to another one. This user suggests that committing the package lock.json file ensures your project uses specific versions of dependencies. This is important, especially if your package.json includes caret or tilde symbols, which allow for updates during continuous integration. So, remember this pro tip. Always commit your package lock.json file. It's a small step that can save you and your team a lot of headaches down the road. And there you have it. You now know that committing the package lock.json file is the way to go. If you found this video helpful, Please hit that subscribe button for more tips and tricks on managing your projects effectively.